All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Navid Momeni, who is in Toronto, Canada. How are you doing, Navid? Good, John. How are you? Great. And I was top ranking sales leader and forward thinking business executive with a 10 year plus track record of success in identifying pursuing new business in technical and other business sectors. Oh, uh, over the course of his dynamic sales and leadership career has been recognized for consistently shattering expectations and outperforming extraordinary sales teams with impressive results. And what we're going to talk today about is you do a lot of work now with sales leader coaching salespeople and that I want to talk about the concept of sales coaching because this is something I think that most sales leaders sales managers don't understand how to do well, so first absolutely. so let's get straight into it. first of all from from your concept what is your approach to sales coaching uh I mean first of all uh, thank you for inviting me uh, I'm a huge fan of uh uh, your podcast. Um, secondly, uh, you know, I I feel uh, I'm part of I blame on you know these movies like uh, like uh, Wolf of Wall Street and uh, Boiler's Room and you know uh, if we could, they call them you know sales movies. Yeah, like Glenn Gary, Glenn Wall Ross, and all those yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That uh, that um, that they think that um, sales is all about selling something no matter what and sales managers uh they have to be these you know uh hardest people that uh they have to uh basically put so much pressure on their people on their team and uh force them uh to to sell the the products or services no matter what and uh what i'm seeing a lot uh, when I get uh, calls uh, from uh, startups or medium-sized companies, or even in some cases large companies, is uh, I go there, you know, for for my consulting services, and I see that uh, they have no idea about what's going on in their home, right? They have no idea about uh, um, what their salespeople are doing, you know, daily, mm -hmm. uh, especially if it's a remote work environment. They have no idea what our managers are doing every day. Uh, they have uh, no ideas of, you know, I asked one of the managers one time, I'm like, hey, uh, you know, what is your close loss ratio? Right. And he had no idea. And mm -hmm. uh, um, and when it comes to the, to you know, that coaching and managing salespeople, uh, so many things have changed uh, since uh, uh, COVID started. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, like I remember when COVID started, I was also one of those leaders that out of nowhere they told me, "Hey, now you have to manage your team uh, remotely." Yeah, yeah. Immediately, I said, "What do you mean remotely? We are salespeople. We can, we cannot, we cannot do this remotely." And uh, and uh, then you know, so many things I learned that I had to adjust my leadership style, um, and uh, I had to learning you know, how to adjust my leadership style based on a couple of basic elements and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the most important one is basically uh, no matter what's happening in your company uh, in your uh, organization you still have to hold uh, your your team accountable mm -hmm. um, and, I think, uh, yeah I, I think now one of the one of the problems because you touched on it earlier there is um, most people their their last experience of coaching right was probably being coached in high school or in some sports or something like that where it was the guy or the guy shouting at you telling you what to do and you just doing what they told you to do and that's when people think coaching and unfortunately that's what happens a lot in sales is basically somebody who was a great salesperson made a sales leader then they just say just do what i did and then people were saying, well, what exactly did you do? And they're saying, well, I'm not 100% sure, but just try and do it anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it. Exactly. That's uh, so many times uh, we think that because we have that top performer in our team, he or she would make a great manager. Uh, and uh, we just put that person, and I've seen this happening many times, where you put that person as a, 
as a new manager and the person would feel miserably and then uh we uh we just say okay well what happened then we put that person on a on a pip and then after that we say goodbye yeah uh, where he says you know like you have to come up with a plan mm -hmm. uh even before you know giving that promotion to that person or something you have to shadow them you have to sit down with them you have to put um put them into professional sales leadership training if your yep. company doesn't have that and then based on that you make a decision hey is this person the right um uh leader or manager you know for this role yeah. and uh that's one thing that i see a lot and another one is i think the biggest mistake that i see companies make and especially with their sales teams is they have one sales manager who has one approach to leadership yeah and they try to implement that approach uh with a team of let's say 20 people 30 people 40 people uh sales sales uh, account executives or sdrs or bdrs yeah. or or uh, sales managers and what happens is then often you see there is a clash an ongoing battle between that you know manager and the account executive why because that manager has only one way of doing things mm -hmm. which we see it a lot and uh uh sometimes you even see it you know i i use sports analogy a lot that you know some of the coaches uh and for me it's main, mainly soccer or you know yeah. Uh, yeah. we call it football where you see that uh, so many of these coaches at the end when when the team is not delivering results and when they are getting sacked from their role uh the relationship with the team with the players you know yeah. was not at a, at a good uh, standing right yeah uh, and and also and what you said there was um not being you know having one way of leading having one way of communicating all of that and you're right i mean you've seen that in the in the euros that have just gone on now then in in europe uh when you have teams that have managers that can switch their whole style of play if they need to switch out players you've other you've other managers who are one trick ponies and they're just like stay doing what you're doing even if we lose and they get and they get fired and i think that's and i think that's it is uh, think about this right now there's five i think somebody said even six generations in the workforce right now the most ever so you can't lead communicate and manage everybody in the same way there's no one size fits all anymore absolutely it's not then and for anyone who's listening you know uh to this show i would say you know i would highly recommend uh you know always ask yourself i i, I use this example a lot that you know with the way that we are living uh in our society right now uh you see there is a when there's a new iphone you see a night before that people go line up in the Mm -hmm. in the street to get that new iPhone when there's a new I don't know PlayStation the same thing when it's there's a new Tesla or something the same thing why because we want to keep upgrading the technology that we use and I always ask you know sales managers sales leaders or sometimes even account executives a simple question when was the last time you upgraded uh, yourself mm. when was the last time you upgraded you know your uh, your approach uh to uh to pipeline management when was the last time you upgraded you know your skill set as a as a manager as a leader because it's it's very easy to be a boss we have lots yeah. of bosses out there i worked for so many of them where uh i can tell you that not only i didn't learn anything from them uh but uh, uh the only thing that i learned from them was uh how to be a leader not a boss and mm -hmm. that's the title of my second book that i'm currently working on which is how to be a leader not a boss because when yeah. you're a boss you might be able to get that results from them in the short term but in the long term uh you collapse in the yeah. long term you cannot deliver that results and uh, uh there are like so many elements that you need to pay attention to uh in order you know to to be a great uh great leader not a boss yeah and and part of that too is uh like we were saying is is that you have to i mean coming into as we're going sales leadership and sales coaching is there's a real temptation 
uh, especially if you've been a high performing salesperson, it's a real temptation to focus to immediately go, okay, now, but I'm going to help you close your deals now. So focus in on the end of the pipeline and, you know, and, and really just end up causing chaos or whatever. You can't really coach and you can't really make an impact at the end of, of, of a sales cycle rather than going back and investing the time with coaching and helping qualify opportunities and, and add value there. And I think that's the problem is that too many of them like go to where they're comfortable, which is the end of the pipeline as opposed to the going doing you know coaching and analysis and helping people at the at the beginning of the pipeline absolutely and uh, and that's one thing that i'm seeing a lot uh, uh don't get me wrong i was i was guilty of this myself early on uh when i got a promotion to become a sales manager and uh you know i call myself a very hands-on type of uh leader and i'm like you know what i'm gonna jump in the calls and help my my reps mm -hmm. you know, to close deals, and uh, I remember I worked for a for a company uh, based out of Kitchener uh, here in Ontario, Canada, where uh, I was reporting to uh, to a boss. He was not a leader. Uh, where that's all he wanted, right? You gotta mm -hmm. jump on the calls. Uh, you gotta you know close deals. You know your don't trust your account executives. You know uh, they don't really understand what they're doing it's your job to do that and short term yeah we were yep. successful uh, but long term i feel i didn't really uh deliver what i had to do as a leader right mm -hmm. and uh, that's the old school mentality right um i think you know at this point you need to be uh i don't i don't believe in the word micromanager I believe in the word micro aware, right? And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is, you know, you have to challenge your salespeople, right? You right. have to, uh, you have to show them, you know, point A, this is where we are today. Point B, this is where we want to be in the future. Your job as a leader is to get them from point A to point B, right? Uh, challenge the status quo, uh, multiply, you know, their, you know, effectiveness by truly understanding what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, and uh, and uh, push them uh, mm -hmm. as much as you can, uh, not because you want them to deliver results, but because you want them to get better and better. Yeah. Uh, the best coach in the world, in my opinion, in soccer, you know, we, we call him the genius. Uh, his name is Pep Guardiola. He's a, yeah. you know, manager of Manchester City. And um, he says something very interesting that he said the only player he never had to teach anything to was Lionel Messi. But then he said <laughs> the rest, uh, and he worked with some top, top players. Absolutely. He said the rest, he didn't care if the person scored uh, one goal in one season or 30 goals. Uh, he kept pushing them to get better and better and better. And that's our job as leaders, right? Uh, how can I turn uh, this person uh, that could be an average account executive to mm -hmm. be the best. And then once that person is the best, hitting the quota and being a top performer is one thing. Staying at the top and deliver that results consistently is another thing, right? Yeah. And the best leaders are the ones that actually that they get that out of their team. Yeah. But one of the other things, Nabit, and I think this is what a lot of people are, are guilty of, is because we're hard, hardwired as humans for some reason. We're really good at spotting all the things that you don't do good right and yeah. um, we're and we're kind of begrudging at the things that you do well and so i often feel like at times is sales leaders they try to fix sales people who aren't good at particular things instead of looking at your team holistically and saying okay i've got navid here he's probably the best door opener we have now once the door is open yeah, he struggles a little bit. He's not the most processed. You know, he's not that great at, you know, doing the rest of it. But he's a fantastic door opener. Whereas I got somebody else over here who's fantastic or once the door is open, not the greatest door opener. And start and start focusing on people's strengths and organizing your team to maximize the strengths as opposed to trying to fix everybody and make them like one person. Exactly. Yeah. And one thing that I always tell uh, sales managers that, uh, uh it's like you know i was having this conversation with uh with the 
director of sales uh, of this uh, tech company in downtown Toronto last week, where I asked him, uh, uh, you know, how, how did you do in Q1 and Q2? Mm -hmm. And he said, in Q1, I did uh, 108% of our quota. The Q2, I did uh, 142%. Wow. And I said, oh, good. And I said, now I have a better question for you. Uh, what percentage of your team were above 25%, 30% closing ratio? And what percentage of your team uh, hit their quota, right? Then the conversation changed. His face changed. He said, well, um, I had 60% uh, of my team hitting the quota. When we look at the numbers, we realized that he has three or four people who have been carrying the team, right? Yeah. So I always tell sales managers, leaders, CEOs, don't be fooled by those numbers. For me, the most important mat metrics or what I call it, you know, a successful team yeah. is when you have more than 60%, 70% of your team hitting the quota, when more than 60%, 70%, they have uh, uh, above that, you know, closing ratio of, let's say, whatever the benchmark is for your industry, for your company. One thing that I started doing that it truly, truly helped not only my sales managers, but also account executives, SDRs and BDRs. It's an approach that we call it sniper focus, right? right? And the way that I explain this is the difference between a guy who knows how to shoot a gun, like, you know, you give rifle to someone or a call, you know, and, sure. you know, tell the person go shoot and they shoot, you know, 30, 40, and they might hit the mark maybe once, right? Yeah, maybe. Uh, versus the guy who uses a sniper is that guy who uses a sniper focuses on one thing and spend hours and days looking at that one thing, right? And it's the same thing in sales. When earlier you mentioned, John, uh, so many times, you know, we call this, you know, call shadowing sessions, yeah. demo reporting sessions. When you shadow your manager, you shadow your account executive, and you're like, okay, you know what? Your intro was bad. Mm -hmm. Your qualification was bad. Your demo was bad. And then the salesperson goes, oh, my God, everything was bad. Right? Yeah. Where it says do a sniper focus and focus on one thing at a time. You know, like just tell that, you know, underperformer that this week we are just going to focus on how to do a proper discovery. Right. Mm -hmm. Next week we are going to focus on how to, you know, do your closing. Right. Yeah. Or same thing with the sales managers. You shadow, you shadow your sales manager. You join as a VP of sales, as a CRO, as a CEO. You shadow, you know, the team meeting. Instead of telling your sales manager, "Hey, man, like your team meeting was awful. Mm -hmm. You didn't, you know, discuss the numbers. You didn't discuss the expectations. This and that." If you truly want to get the best out of that individual and push them and help them to be better, do the sniper focus. Focus on one thing at a time, versus mm -hmm. throwing 10, 20 things at the same time yeah trust me once people started doing this i saw the improvement not only in terms of closing ratio but also number of people in the team hitting their quota but mm. also in terms of employee retention <laughs> but also in terms of you know like uh customer satisfaction and customer retention uh that's one thing that i truly truly believe in and i'll highly recommend for sales leaders uh yeah, no i'm i'm I, no that and that's a great approach because you're basically you're seeing the progress but you're also focusing on one thing so everybody's moving together in the same way as opposed to as you said like because we're hardwired for that for some reason rather than bombard you with all here's all the things you don't do very well and and just demoralizing you at the end of the day because you can't at that stage you're going wow is there anything I do good here I mean like, what you know why am I even here so I, I think that's an excellent excellent approach I think the last thing Navid though is if you're going to do this as a sales leader if you're going to work on something you're going to coach you have to do it consistently because otherwise if I make if if you put on my calendar next week a coaching session or you put on a regular one we're coaching every Thursday at whatever time and you keep canceling them and moving them and saying oh I can't do it this week all you've said to me is that it doesn't matter exactly and that's and that's <laughs> I mean you brought up a good point John that's I see that happening a lot and for all the sales managers who who are listening to this if you Keep rescheduling your weekly one-on-ones, your weekly pipeline reviews, 
your weekly sales trainings. If you're one of those managers and if you think that you can do that because your team is delivering results or you can do that because you're too busy by uh, putting your head, uh, you know, in the, you know, in the mm -hmm. computer and look at the reports four hours uh, per day, you're just lying yourself to yeah. yourself. And honestly, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to take those sessions seriously and you have to do it, you know, consistently and you have to do it with so much passion and love. I always tell, you know, my you know sales managers, when they're, you're doing your sales training, give me your 200 percent. Yeah. Especially if it's remote, I want to feel that energy through the camera. And if you feel you had a bad day or you got into fight with your wife or you haven't had your coffee yet and you want to do a lousy job, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. You know, yeah. and reschedule those those sessions. It's not only being, you know, selfish, but also you're disrespecting your your team by doing that. Imagine yeah. the worst type of you know the coaches, you know, in any sports, are the ones that, and we have had few of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that they keep skipping those you know talk sessions. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, it's only having a what thirty minutes conversation, but they have no idea that thirty minutes conversation with your you know players. Yeah, that would get them mentally ready for the battle, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's exactly. the same thing. If you're not showing that, you know, uh, commitment to your team, and trust me, I worked with manager like that before, where you know this guy, it was already zoned out. He didn't want to be there. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, like, like I didn't have a proper one-on-one -on -one with him for almost eight months, nine right. months, mm -hmm. uh, because you know he he was he he didn't want to be there. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and that's why you know I always tell people, you know, sales people, this is super important. Yeah, no, I I I hundred percent agree. I think I think it's critical. Well, listen, Navid, this has been fantastic. All of Navid's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, currently, um, uh, I have a sales consulting company called uh, Sales Guru Global, uh, and uh, I recently published a. Uh, a sales book, which is for SDRs, BDRs, account executives, sales managers, director of sales, VP of sales, 17 chapters. The first 10, 11 chapters is for uh, basically the account executives and SDRs and BDRs. And the last five, six chapters are for uh, sales managers and sales leaders called How to Become a Sales Master, uh, where 100% proceeds goes to a charity in Ukraine. And it's a top seller, currently a top seller in three categories in Amazon. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about sales. Uh, so for anyone uh, uh, who's interested to uh, you know, grow and become a better salesperson, a better leader, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Yeah, yeah, no, go. I encourage you uh, reach out, check out the books, check out the book that's coming out. As I said, all the information is going to be below the video, so I'd encourage you to go check it out. So listen, thanks again, Navid. Thank you for watching and listening.